What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of Shoot the Shit with Summer of Guests here on the Knights of Horror. Today, I'm doing something brand new that I've never done on the channel, and I'm very excited to be doing this. A while back, Rob and I, if you guys don't know by now, are huge wrestling fans. Uh, we've been trying to hit up a lot of indie shows around the area of California, and we came up with one, I, I believe it was a few months ago, um, and we came up upon one that uh, I was like, hell yeah, let's go. Let's have a good time. Let's go check it out. One superstar, one wrestler, one whatever you want to call them. I, I like to call them professional wrestlers. Uh, struck me the most and easily one of the coolest guys to talk with afterwards. My guest today, professional wrestler, level up, Noah. How you doing, buddy? Doing all right, man. Thanks for having me on. Hey man, it, it's it's my pleasure, man. I, I like I said, man. I love wrestling and my, as probably as much as you do, uh, because you're you're in the business, man, and, and you probably even love it more than I do because you're actually doing it. You're you're making your dream as a professional wrestler come true, man. Uh, yeah, yeah. Talk to me a little bit about uh, when you first fell in love with wrestling. Ah, uh, that's that's a fun one. Um, I want to say I got I started falling. In love of wrestling uh, in like 2006, 08. My brother actually was watching it uh, way before I was. and uh, He was introducing me into it. And around the time we had people like, uh, there's Mysterio, Cena, all the, all the good ones, uh, Tisa, Triple H. And then just growing up watching it, you know, I'm like, oh, hey, I want to do that with my life. Dude. I love I love wrestling with the passion, and I know you do, man. And and uh, a lot of those names you've you've named have gone on to do great things, man. It, it, was there one wrestler in specific that was a huge motivation uh, to you stepping into this world that you were like, this is the reason why I want to be a wrestler because of this specific person? Um, this one's probably not me and Shocker, but John Cena. Dude, Cena. Hey, man. Cena's set for his return pretty soon, man, and I'm looking forward to yeah. that. And uh, now, yeah, Cena is a big one for a lot of people. I mean, Cena reinvented the game when he came in and, and really set a path for, for millions upon millions to be inspired by. And, and just to see what he's doing now in, in, in Hollywood now, you know, it's like he's doing the exact, he's following the exact same footsteps the Rocks did when he left his legacy there and now going on to do things. So, yeah, man. Um, now, uh, the first time I saw you, I was just I, I I love the thing about I love about independent promotions compared to the mainstream stuff you see is is just two things is one the gimmicks are are they feel like that classic style wrestling that I knew and loved love so much I mean it, and it really does that but it's got a modern twist on it which I absolutely love the gimmicks are uh, amazing um, and two you guys put on way better matches in the indies than i see on television today and and it's like i'm blown away by that because i know you guys work your asses off to to want to get to those areas but in order to do that you got to start somewhere and and you and like i said I, I think i like the indies way more just because it's way more interactive way more closer i get to meet people like you and do things like this well, what has been the best thing since starting uh, about that whole world man like well, what's been the best thing for you um, honestly, it's, um, it's meeting, like, all the people in it, um, all the nice relationships you get to have in it, and then, um, getting to work with, like, a lot of people that, you know, you can intentionally just beat the crap out of each other, and then you guys are going to be going to, like, Applebee's afterwards laughing about it, like, it's always, I, I intend to find myself in a lot of positive locker rooms, and it's, like, really amazing because you know it's like you forget all about all the crappy people in the world and all the negative stuff and you just with a bunch of people that you truly love being around oh 100 percent, and they're all they're all the same mindset they all love this business they all love what they do and and they're all trying to 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 make something out of, of this and uh, yeah i love the support uh that I see after the shows with everyone, like, you know, you, you'll go to a show and this guy could be like the, the scumbag, you know, like the bad, the bad guy, everything, you know? And then afterwards you talk to them and they're just, they're just extremely thankful. They're extremely nice. They're extremely cool. And it's like, 
me, I like really getting into the things of the show, and I really like to 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 be part of that show. And so I, you know, I'll cheer for bad guys, I'll cheer for good guys. You know, it's it's a back and forth thing. It's one of the fun things. Uh, you know, what do you find better in wrestling for for you at least? Do you like playing the good guy more? Or do you like playing the bad guy? Uh man. See, uh, I've been I've been a good guy, like my whole career. Right. Because I say I, I like I like that energetic feeling when it goes through the curtain. I love feeling like everyone, you know, repping for me throughout the whole day. Do I mean, is it possible in the future we could maybe see a level of Noah Hill though? Oh uh, well, man. When I don't, I don't, I just, I don't have that hatred in me, man. It's like all positive vibes, you know. That's true. I mean. You know, I, you're it, for those who don't know Level of Noah's gimmick, man. It is one of the best things, especially if you're like me, a geek, and 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 every into this things. You're gonna love Noah's uh, gimmick because you're very video game inspired. Now, I'm assuming that comes from a background of of just you growing up, also playing video games with you know the world of wrestling. You just brought the two together, correct? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a, it's a real fun gimmick. Like, it's very cool. Just, I, I wish I would have been the one who came up with it. <laughs> oh, I'd love to hear that yeah. story. Oh, yeah. So, you know, back in pandemic days when things were slowly starting up, um, me and my trainer were messing around, and he, like, I had no gimmick, and I couldn't find one because any time someone would ask, I would be like, oh, I'm just me, you know, like big wrestling fan trying to make it, da da da. And he's like, why don't we do this thing where you just, you uh, you're based off of video games. You, you know, you bring out like things from the games. You use them in your matches, and like it'd be really interesting to do. And I've been doing it since um, February of this year, and a lot of people have gotten a lot of I've gotten a lot of positive feedback from it. No, I I absolutely love it, dude. It's you you the the fun part about it when I first saw you was you brought out the star from uh, I believe it's it's the Mario franchise, yep. and. Anyone that knows that franchise knows what that star does. So, uh, just to see that you incorporated that in your in your gimmick, and it kind of is like a boost for you, like exactly how the urn was for the Undertaker. You know what I mean? Like that's your kind of urn, but it's your it's your boost up. It's like that's what's going to keep you going and keep you motivated to to want to win. Um, in the world of wrestling, man, there's so much there's you know there's so much time. Uh, blood, sweat, and tears that go into it as far as, you know, like having to train your body, having to be on, you know, certain diets and stuff to kind of stay with it. What do you find uh, find best as far as, as your training goes and as far as having to stay on, uh, like if you had to stay on a certain diet for, for to keep your muscle and everything? Uh, so I, I train about two, two to three times a week just to keep everything moving, flowing. And, you know, you can always learn new things. There's, like, never a day where you can never learn something new. Um, I actually need to get on a diet because since COVID, I've lost all motivation for, like, going to the gym and stuff. So I just need to get that back. Dude. But yeah. Just, just got to keep – honestly, you just got to keep working. Like, even if it's for, like, 20 minutes, like, every time you go in. I mean, as long as you're, like, putting in the work to try and do something, you know. Definitely, man. Like, I, I, I see, like, because I'll watch, and this goes beyond even wrestling that I've seen, but I go, I'll watch wrestling, uh, like, people in, from wrestling working out, but I'll watch, like, even if you look at, like, the MMA guys and the UFC guys, what they have to go through just to work out for, like, six months straight just to get ready for their fight, and it's 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 insane to see, like, their, how they work out, and, and, and just overall, these workouts are just, they're nuts for, you know, like, but these guys stay in really good shape and that's why they do it because they, they love the damn business and, and they want to keep up and, and better themselves as, as wrestlers. Now with, with a lot of fun things going on right now in the world of wrestling and a lot of interesting things going on a lot in the world of wrestling too. Um, you know, with WWE having plans on, on future things, a lot of rumors and stuff and, and AEW doing their own thing. Like what do you, what's the one thing that, uh, that you you've enjoyed as a wrestler seeing all this and and i know you've you've probably met people 
that have maybe guest spotted on AEW or guest spotted on on wrestling as like local competitors, which I always find those are those are really cool. Like to give people the opportunity to to showcase what they can do, and you can kind of see them around. So what what, what are you what are your thoughts on all that? And hopefully we hopefully we could see you on one 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 of these days, right? Yeah, that would definitely be fun. Um, you know, Double Nelson was out here in Vegas, and I got to see a lot of my peeps on Dart doing security and being part of the show. And it was really cool. Um, you know, I've actually done a few matches with um, Kid Bandit, who is blown up around the world. He's been on AEW multiple times. Right. Very fun to do. Um, me and him have uh, done, a, done a tag match against each other a few months ago. Hell, he wrestled me on my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> that's a fun that, birthday that gift a, right there dude yeah it was, it was really fun like every like all my peers i see whether it's on wwe impact or uh AEW, like it's really cool to see them there because you know it just motivates me more and more to freaking get up to their level at some point yeah dude and you know you talk about all these you know these companies and stuff right and for the longest time uh, for a long time there, it was mainly WWE was the, the, you know, the one that everyone knew and got into wrestling with. I feel like in the last couple of years, especially when you had guys like Chris Jericho and Cody Rhodes, you know, kind of going off, going back and reinventing themselves and, and everything, they really brought a new eye. They brought new audiences and new eyes towards the indies. The indies is, is more popular now than it has ever been been like as far as not only just diehard wrestling fans but now you're getting mainstream wrestling fans wanting to see all this AEW really opened that door to kind of let all these different wrestlers that you probably never knew in these other promotions like for example no one knew who uh Kenny Omega was until you know Jericho went over there and started showcasing him more especially like the mainstream audience the diehard fans knew who he was but the mainstream didn't know and now he's a household name how does it make you feel to see that a lot of the, you know, AEW is giving the freedom for the wrestlers to really go fight wherever they want and other promotions and stuff, but how does it make you feel to, to know that the indies are getting more eyes and a lot of people are just eager to want to go to these shows now? I'm, I'm glad that uh, the indies are getting like, a lot more exposure than they used to because, you know, it's kind of crazy because a lot of people think, oh, a lot of these people are like homegrown for like these bigger companies. And, you know, some of them have never spent time on the Indies. And honestly, I feel like they're missing out because that's, like, probably some of the best parts of your career that you could have is going through all these different emotions, meeting all these different people. It's like building a brand for yourself before you get to that big brand. Yeah, dude, 100%. Because I, I find, like I said, I, I've had more fun at indie shows since I started going than I've had more at – you know, you go to you go to one in an arena. It's like you, chances are you're going to be sitting very top, and you're going to enjoy the show. But when you're at an indie show, you're paying a really good price for the same amount of time of wrestling, and you're even closer, and you interact more with the the wrestlers. I mean, I've had so much fun just rooting for the bad guy or the bad guy trying to you know step me up or something. It's just it's funny to see all that, you know, and it, it's you don't get that that interaction anymore and the mainstream wrestling. So I'm glad that people like you and, and this, this community keep that alive because I think that's what makes people want to keep coming back to these shows. Um, you just had a match recently, didn't you? Yeah. So talk to us a little bit about, uh, who your opponent was, uh, the promotion and, and where, uh, what the match was. Um, all right. So I, I've, um, had, I've had two matches the past two weeks. One was out here in Vegas at Big Valley's Live Crowd uh, LGBTQ fundraiser show. Oh, nice. Uh, and I, I've been a part of every single one of those, and I did not want to miss this one. It was really fun. I wrestled one of my trainers, Ricky Tenacious, in, a grudge, in another grudge match. <laughs> really fun. The people there were amazing. Was, like, these pride shows are like so different because, like, but, like the energy is like all, a lot different. And it's like they're they're like into it a little more. Right. Crazy. And then um, this past Saturday, I was out in California for uh, BWE at in Brawley at the Inferno, 
And I was wrestling against Brandon G. And Brandon G is like one of the easiest dudes I've ever had to be in the ring with. He's one of the funnest dudes I've been in the ring with. You know, you saw me and him coming together at uh, 3PWA when you first saw us. Yeah. And, you know, me and him had a fun time with that match. The crowd got really into it. All the, all the little kids and stuff were booing him. And they enjoyed every time I was hitting him. And they were hating every time he was hitting me. It was great. Which, you Definitely. know, that... You know, I love hearing those stories because I know you guys actually are, uh, you guys are really good friends in real life too. You, know, you guys, you know, you guys are always driving place to place and I think that's awesome to kind of stick together and everything. And I know you, you've had ideas in the future. You, you guys, I really think you guys would be a good tag team, honestly. Like, I, I, I know you've been trying to root for that for some time now, but I, I want to see that happen. I need to see some tag team gold around you guys and everything. Uh, that'd be nice. Dude, it, it's be nice. it would be nice, and and I think what ultimately sold me on that tag team team overall was uh, when we saw you guys and you were in this corner with the book, uh, his book, and oh my god, I think you just you alone. I mean, the match was super entertaining, but to have you running around reading like things from this book and everything, and it, I re- you know that was hilarious, man. And that right there was like, dude, imagine these two together. Uh-huh tag team that's tag team gold right there dude i'd come to see all their shows if they were fucking a tag team too yeah dude the book of greatness is a fun fun little thing he has going for him he actually just dropped uh, his second book of greatness book of greatness volume two so now we have that so that's gonna be very fun to work with <laughs> some new uh inspirational quotes i'm i'm assuming that the book is telling him things to do more things to do and whatnot oh man uh one of my favorite things and i I think everyone can agree with this is a good uh a good promo and and everything to really get the crowd going for you uh how hard do you find making and doing promos is it is it something that you're you're still kind of working on or is it something that you kind of feel confident that you have down so in my opinion my promos could always be better they could always um whether it's fire or it's like how the timing and the wording is, it can always be there. Um, when I have to film a promo for a promotion, it takes me 20 tries because, you know, I always have to make sure it sounds right. I have to make sure, like, my points are getting across and I don't sound stupid. But when it comes to me having to cut it in front of a live crowd, I, everything switches and I can nail every point and I can get a very good promo out. In a, like right then and there in front of the crowd, where in front of a camera I get like more nervous and just more anxiety when it comes to it. It's like it's a weird thing because some people say it'd be different for them because you know in front of a crowd they'd be more nervous. Right. But, it's all the adrenaline that just kind of hits you, and you're like, I I can nail exactly. this, and I'll get even more energy from these people, get these people hyped up and and ready or not, dude. That'd be dope. Man, and, and, and another thing I know a lot of, this is a lot of thing too, but, uh, you know, what really sets the tone for your, uh, your character, your, you know, what sets the tone for the entire match and everything usually too is entrance music. Entrance music is a huge thing in the professional wrestling realm. That's what really what's going to set the tone of who your character is and, and what your mission statement is as, as a wrestler. What is, uh, when coming up with your uh, entrance music, what was a lot of things that you took in mind and a lot of things that you probably drew inspiration from? Oh, uh, man, honestly, for, the, for what I was doing, I was having a very rough time trying to find a theme song. Because I was trying to find one that I could vibe with that, wouldn't, that wasn't like too long and that people could go with and vibe with as well. So, I just found this, like, um, nice little instrumental, like, start music that I've used, like, once. For, for like, any time you have to use non-copyrighted music, I use that one. Right. But then, like, I, funny enough, I was just scrolling on, it was Instagram or TikTok, and then, like, this one song's playing, and I'm like, oh, it's a falling in reverse song. I like those guys. Let me go listen to the whole thing. And then, like, right from, like, the first 30 seconds, I was like, yeah, this is it. I'm going to use this one. And 
I've had a lot of good people, a lot of people say they like it and that, like it really fits with me and people can vibe with it. And I'm like, yep, that's what I was aiming for. So I'm glad people liked it. Dude, that's, and that's the thing is that's, that's ultimately, like I said, that's what's, that's what's introducing your character and the, giving the vibe of what your character is. I mean, uh, I'll take an example of some mainstream ones. I know a lot of people will know, uh, triple H has motorhead dude. When he, when that music hits, when you hear that first guitar note, you know, it's triple H, you know, it's motorhead, you know, it's, it's game time, you know, undertaker, the bells, you know, the whole slow entrance. That's his vibe. That's his, you know, that's his thing. John Cena has a, a song that's going to get everybody off their feet. Level up. Noah has a song that's going to relate to his character and get you up off your feet and get you hyped and ready for this match. And uh, gonna gonna put some boots to asses. Is what's gonna happen? <laughs> all, all, all damn day, man. So uh, another, obviously another staple of of any wrestler is a, is a good signature and a good finisher, man. I've seen what you can do in the ring in person. I've been seeing a ton of clips on Instagram, and I am straight blown away when I see a lot of these moves because, god damn, this is you know, professional wrestling, man. All you haters out there could call this shit fake, but fuck you, bro. I could show you a bunch of things that will say otherwise. Uh, for example, most recently, that was mainstream Cody Rhodes. <laughs> yeah, you you know. You're probably watching that match. Every time he got hit with that stick, you're like, just stop, please stop. Just please. Yeah. It was gross. It was gross, but uh, signatures and finishers, man. Uh, talk to me. What's uh, what were some of your favorites growing up, and and what is something what is something that you use in the ring today? Man, try picking a favorite signature or finisher. That's that's actually pretty hard because there is a lot of good ones, yeah. and there are still some that I like today. Um, common one, the RKO. Yep, I will never hate it. The move is never bad always on point it's devastating um Drew McIntyre's Claymore yep it's vicious and then you know another common one would be the spear oh yeah different people hit it and then it's very effect differently effective for everyone else who does it um you know my finish area is good it's a good old ripcord snapmare driver nice Occasionally, I'll, I'll when I if I feel like it, I'll do the frog play. You know, like. Oof, that's uh. I hope you're thinking about good old Eddie Guerrero when you're doing that every time too. Every time. That's the man. He he he. I think you know a lot of people have done that iconic move, but he there was something about his that would just felt natural, like that move belonged to him. He that he had the right to call that his, even though he wasn't the one that invented it. He definitely is the one that a lot of people think about when that move is, you know, that move is done. Definitely made it popular. Yeah, dude. He 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 did, man. I, I'd have to say easily one of my favorite finishers of all time has always been because it might be because I'm a six foot six guy, but choke slam has always been one of my favorites, man. Like yeah. I had a feeling if I was in wrestling, I'd try my best to do choke slams the best I can. Yeah, those are real fun. <sighs> You've probably taken a couple of those, huh? huh? A couple of them. Just a couple. a couple. At least you weren't dragged down to hell like Edge was, so... That's, uh... Yeah, you don't want to do that. Um, yeah, I'm all good. <laughs> no, I, I, uh... So, what is... What's next for, for Noah? What do we got coming up? What do we got that fans can expect to see from you next? What what can we expect from Mr. Level Up Noah himself? Honestly, that's... That, that, that's probably the adventure I don't know either, man. Like, just gonna keep moving. Ho hopefully... Hopefully Level Up Noah can strike some chips of gold again pretty soon. I'm hoping for it, man. I'm hoping for it. I mean... Yeah, that's always the goal. You know... If you had to choose where to go right now with the state of things and, and you were to get signed, uh, what would be a, 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 a promotion, whether big nor small, that you would love to wrestle at one day? Yeah. Like With how everything is going right now and how you see things going in the next couple of years, honestly, 
I, I'd really like to go to Impact Wrestling, man. Dude. They, they've man. been tearing it up, man. And honestly, like, I, I, it, I was like a late bloomer to Impact Wrestling. Like, I started watching them up in 2010, 2011. Right. And they were killing it. And now seeing where they are today, like, that's definitely a place I would want to be uh, somewhere in the next couple of years, hopefully. I'm I'm for it, dude. I'd love to see you on Impact, man. Because I could be like, see that guy right there? Know that guy. He's fucking cool, man. That, that, that guy right there. That guy right there. He made it in life. And I tell all the people that I'm with, be like this guy because he's going places. Oh, man, that's cool. So when when's the next time hopefully we get to see you back in California again? Uh, I actually will be back in California July 9th at July 9th. Uh, BWE. VWE man, uh, what are you already booked for a match there? I'm assuming yes, you are. But can you say what it is yet? Or we gotta uh, wait. Unfortunately, I don't even know what I'm doing yet. So once I once I do, it'll be all over the ground. All over the ground. Where can they find you, by the way, for to to, to kind of keep up with with the wrestling career and and to see what you're doing, where you're gonna be at and stuff. Uh, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter all at Level Up Noah. If you want to follow me on Facebook, it's at Noah Anderson. And trust me, you'll be able to find which one's me. <laughs> Level up Noah, man. You got to you gotta see this guy in person. You got to go support indie wrestling, man. These guys fucking give 110% every show they, they perform at. And they do it because they love this business. And this is what they want to do for a career. And that is why I support indie wrestling over, over anything. You know, because like I said, these guys are working their asses off. These talented men women whatever you may identify as anyone uh that that is in this professional wrestling realm um they are all here because they love this business and they want to continue to grow in this business and we have to support indie wrestling so they we can help them grow and get their names out there so Definitely come, bring the family. It's a very, I guarantee you, these things usually are family friendly, and I guarantee you, be you'll have a whole, whole great time with the family. So bring the family out, bring the Theo, bring the auntie, you know, bring the, you know, bring grandma. I, I know grandma's probably a wrestling fan. She's probably always cheering for tables. She's probably that one person that goes get the tables, you know. Just let's. Grandma. Yep, get them out. If Grandma says get the tables, I mean, we got to get the tables, you know. Grandma's Grandma's probably been watching wrestling since the fucking 70s. She knows, bro. She knows. Noah Anderson, it is so uh, great to catch up with you, to talk with you, man, and I can't wait to see you again in person. Um, so I, I, I wish you the best, man. I hope I get to see you on, on TV one of these days, man. I really do because I'm tuning in every week and – if I tune in one week and I see your beautiful mug on that TV, I'm going to best know I'm going to be blasting it all over Instagram, man, because you, you are yeah. a very talented wrestler, and I want to see you, Thank you succeed, man. Yeah, man. Thanks. Yeah, Appreciate man. Appreciate it. Hey, man. Listen, though, if you ever want a challenge for the Try Not to Get Scared Challenge title, you know, come over during October, haunt season. I'll take you to a haunt. Whoever gets scared the most uh, will lose, and whoever gets scared the least will walk away with that belt. So, Heck yeah. let's do it. All right, brother. Well, thank you guys so much for watching this. If you guys liked, you know, a different interview, you know, we haven't, we've never, this is the first professional wrestler we've ever interviewed, and I really want to get into that realm more. So, if you guys want to see more in the indie area and stuff, um, send them my way or tell them about this, you know, show them, share this with them. Uh, I'd love to interview more wrestlers, man. This is, this is a lot of fun. I like to find out different characters. Noah, thank you for being the first, you know, setting Ooh, up. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. For having me on, man. Set, setting the bar, man. This is it right here. Um, but leaves Noah some comments. Go follow him on all his socials. Keep up to what he's doing. He's, he's everywhere. Honestly, when I, when I mean everywhere, he's everywhere, man. Cause he's traveling and he's doing big things out there it's gonna take over the world next bro we watch um but if you guys are new to the channel hit that subscribe button with that bell notification bell. every time we put up a new video follow us on instagram at the knights of horror and twitter at knights of horror i'm your host anthony and i will see you guys next week for another episode of shoot the shit Bye.